Welcome to Slurm in the Clouds. Uh, this is the Slurm User Group Meeting uh, 2021. Uh, this is our second to last session. My name is Nick Eiley. Uh, we'll have Tim Wickberg after me at, at uh, uh, the half hour mark. A couple quick uh, notes for those that have not attended other sessions. We have five separate sessions, so look for those links. Um, and you can continue to uh, watch these and, and share those with colleagues. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get the, the slides you can look at as well. Um, feel free to ask questions as we go through this. Uh, we'll have people moderating the chat so you can get those questions in there so you don't forget them as we go and, and they'll get those questions over to me and we can answer them. Um, probably at the end is we'll have the most time to, to go through those questions. So as I mentioned, this is Slurm in the Clouds. We're going to be talking about uh, our new features in 2108 that uh, continue to help enable and make uh, cloud-related power saving um, easier in, in Slurm. And we'll also talk about a little about our public clouds that we work with and, and our partners there and what they're doing with Slurm um, in their own public cloud. So to start, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of different uh, changes and, and, and enhancements we've made to the power saving capability in Slurm, which, which enables cloud computing with, with Slurm. Uh, firstly, we have a new parameter that we've added um, in the Slurm control D parameters, the node registration memory percent. Uh, what this does is that allows a node to register to the Slurm controller with less memory than it was configured with. Previously, what would happen is the node, if it was configured with, let's say, uh, 100 gigabytes, um, because that's what you know the cloud uh, advertises as how much those nodes have. Um, but when the node comes up and registers with the Slurm controller, it registers with less. That's because uh, some memory is reserved for the operating system. What Slurm would do is it would mark that node as down because it had a, a misconfiguration there. Um, what this allows you to do is set a percentage for how much uh, memory you want to be able to still allow Slurm to accept. So in that example of a 100 gig node that you you configured Slurm, the Slurm node with, um, when it comes up, let's say it comes up with 95 gigs, it will still be allowed. If it comes up with 90 gigs, again, still it's allowed. But if it comes up with 89 gigs, that would be below that 90% and it will know, it will then get marked as down. So. Um, just a, a note on that, you can make that modification. Uh, another in, important thing to understand in this is uh, Slurm will still schedule based on what is configured, not what it reported, uh, the Slurm D reported as the memory. So in that example of 100 gigs, Slurm will schedule as if there is 100 gigs on that node, not the 90. So that's just something to, uh, to be aware of if you're using this and allowing those nodes to uh, um, register with less memory than, than is configured. Secondly, um, we, we've done a lot of work in 2108 to clarify and clean up what's going on with the power states and what that transitions of different power states look like throughout the life of, uh, of a node during the process of, of cloud and, and power saving. Um, so I'm going to walk you through uh, through that a little bit, and um, also our documentation has been updated to to um, show this as well. So you can look through that documentation to understand all those different states. Is that's a very common question that we get. Um, so so looking at this from the the resume standpoint, so a node is sitting idle, it's powered off, and that's signified with the tilde. Um, at this point, that node is eligible to be powered up, or in the cloud perspective, it's going to be provisioned and created. Um, once a job comes in um, and that node is allocated for, uh, for that job, the job itself goes into a configuring state, as you can see there on the top. And then the node moves from idle to allocated or mixed. That's based on if uh, all the, the CPUs are used or if just some of them are used. Um, the, the power saving state is going to move from powered off to powering on, uh, and that's signified by the hash sign. When the node comes up, registers with the SERM controller, at that point the job starts running and you'll see just the allocated or mixed state on the node and you no longer have that powering state because it is um, uh, up and running at that point. The job goes into completing state and then, and then finishes. 
Now, a little branch from that path is when the resume fails. So we're looking at the same um, process here where the node is idle and powered off. The job came in and Slurm allocated a, that node for, for that job and it goes into the allocated mix state. And then it goes powering on um, uh, with the hash as, as I previously mentioned. But something happens. Um, we have the resume timeout parameter. If that timeout gets hit, something happened with the provisioning, it wasn't able to do it, maybe there's an issue with uh, quota within the cloud or some other issue came up where the node got um, provisioned but was never able to properly communicate back to the Slurm controller. Uh, that is where we uh, will then go and um, uh, Slurm will mark that node as down and uh, put it into the powered off with the tilde. Um, so that that's a, a little variation that will happen. Um, you would need some form of a side script that's going to take a look at that and move that node from down to idle um, and, and check that. And also you would want to make sure and be aware of if a, a resource was actually provisioned but it was never able to uh, properly call back to the Serum controller, uh, you would want some script that's going to go out and um, uh, deprovision that resource off to the side. Now we have the, the other side of things. The node's up, uh, the job is completed, and now we're gonna go through the suspend action. So the, um, the node is idle because the job finished, um, no new jobs were added to that node, so it's sitting idle. Um, what's gonna happen is based on the suspend time parameter that you set for how long you want that node to sit before uh, the next transition is going to happen, before the suspend program is executed. Uh, let's say that's five minutes. Once five minutes hits, then the suspend program is called and that's going to move the node into the uh, idle but powering down state. And that's signified by the percent sign. Um, within that program, you can have that program go and change the node state uh, to power it off um, faster if you want to. If not, the suspend timeout, once that is hit, then it gets moved into the powered off, uh, again, signified by the idle sign, uh, by the, the, the um, tilde, and the node is in idle state, ready to be, uh, um, allocated for a new job sometime in the future where uh, a new node is, is provisioned. Now connected again to the power saving cleanup that we've been doing, we make some, made some modifications to sinfo, sview, and scontrol of wh what is displayed about the, the power states uh, when you look at those, those outputs. Um, but previously, it would, uh, as we were looking at that last slide where it was idle and powered down, it would say idle tilde. Um, so you have to memorize all those different uh, um, uh, special symbols. And so now it's going to uh, be changed to say idle plus cloud, because it's a cloud node, plus powered down. So that tilde is going to be translated for you. Um, you'll see that in the state complete field for sinfo and sview. Um, but in scontrol, um, you'll see the... Uh, and then you'll see the you know uh, uh, the new method of allocated plus powering up plus cloud versus what it was where it was allocated um, a hash sign plus cloud. So it makes it a little easier to to parse and, and look at when you are um, trying to understand what state the nodes are in. Um, and um, you'll all you're also able to get those states in the REST API. We also made it easier to manually power down your machines. Um, and we, we basically uh, divided it up into three different types of scenarios. Uh, so when you do an S control update, the node name, and then you give it a state, um, these three different states are going to have three different actions. So you have your power down. Um, that is going to tell Slurm to power down this node once the, it is idle and no jobs are no longer on the node. Um, so what's going to happen is it's going to get the exclamation point added to it. That, that means it's in a, in a power down that as soon as that node is uh, completely free, it's going to get uh, go through the, the uh, suspend program. Um, so this means that a job is on that node, and then another job could get on that node, and another job could get on that node, and not until all jobs are cleared from that node and it goes into idle state will it power down. Uh, the next step is the power down a ASAP. This is going to tell Slurm to put that node into drain state so that whatever workload is currently on the node will be allowed to finish, but once it's done, no new jobs are going to be able to ever get put on that node because it's in, it's in drain state, and then go through the power down process by executing the, um, the suspend program. Third is the brute force method of power down force. Uh, this will kill all running jobs that are currently running on that node and then power down that node immediately. 
Uh, one nice thing that this uh, enables is the ability to also power down nodes that are part of the suspend exclusion list. So normally, um, if you're on on-prem or, or in the cloud, you might have a couple of nodes that are on the suspend ex exclude list. So in, in a cloud environment, some of those nodes, they're, they're supposed to be static for, for quite a while. But then at some point, you want to you wanna bring those down. Uh, this will allow you to do that if you manually call uh, um, set those nodes to these states, even though if they're in the suspend exclude list, they will be able to manually be powered down. Another common question that we get is, uh, how can I tell when my node is going to be powered down? When was it idle or how long has it been idle for? So we've added a field in S control called last busy. This is going to tell you a timestamp of when that node moved from the uh, the state of mixed or allocated to a state of idle or a state of down. So you'll know that uh, when you see that timestamp and then based on what your suspend time is, you can figure out um, when that node will be uh, um, when that node will be powered down. So if the time if your if your suspend time is five minutes and you powered down or, or the last time it moved from allocated to idle was was four minutes ago, you know that in one minute that that in, in, as long as no new job goes to that node, the uh, the suspend program is going to be executed in one minute. We made some modifications to uh, where you can set some of the uh, power saving parameters. Um, right now, or before 2108, the power saving parameters were all at a global level. But we've taken suspend time and suspend timeout and resume timeout and, and added them to the partition level. So you can set them at the partition level. Um, this makes it really nice to be able to have different suspend times potentially for different partitions. Um, if they different have type, uh, compute type, compute node types, or different needs of those partitions, but also from a hybrid perspective, um, when you set up a hybrid environment where you're bursting from on-premise to the cloud, most of your nodes are going to be on-prem nodes typically, and most of those nodes they're not going to go through the power saving process. So you would have to set up the power saving parameters and then create that suspend exclusion list that would list all your on-prem nodes. Um, this kind of allows you to reverse that a little bit where at the global level all you need to do is set the suspend time to infinite so no nodes globally are going to be suspended ever um, but then at the per partition level you set up your your suspend time so those nodes that are cloud nodes can be configured to be in a specific partition and only those nodes are the ones that will be uh, um, uh, power saved. Um, so it makes setting up the hybrid environment much, much easier. Uh, we've also added a Slurm a variable to the job. Uh, that is the Slurm resume file. It's a file that will provide in JSON format um, a list of, of all the jobs um, and those nodes uh, that are allocated to that specific job. So you can have that for your records um, or reporting that you might do. So you can know specifically that this job uh, went uh, um, and was allocated at, at this specific node. And then finally, I wanted to call out uh, the burst buffer. Uh, Marshall's presentation before me, I highly recommend to go and review that. It's a great presentation um, and goes into good detail about what the burst buffer is and how it works. There's great cloud potential for it, uh, for hybrid and all in the cloud, um, where you can stage your data before and after jobs are completed without wasting dollars on compute idle time. You don't want to have to spin up a node in the cloud and then do some data staging, which could maybe let's say it's 10 15 20 minutes um, that's real money that you are you you are spending as that node sits idle um, instead you could do that data staging to some cloud storage before the the node is allocated then that node gets allocated and provisioned and created the job runs uses that data um, then the job can finish and uh, the node can be pulled down then that data that might be in cloud storage could be uh, copied back potentially if that's what you wanted to do, but the node doesn't have to stay um, alive. Um, again, wasting money and spending money on resources that you're not using. So highly take a look, highly recommend taking a look at, at Burst Buffer and see if it works for, for your uh, requirements. I want to now uh, jump into a short discussion about what we're doing with our cloud partners. Um, we have very strong relationships with our, our public cloud partners. 
and are working with them very, very closely on development and consultative engagements um, with our goal is to continue to enhance that experience of, of using Slurm on their clouds. We want to make it easy. We want to make it simple. We want to give our customers that ability to um, have that experience they have on-prem, but also in the cloud. So in, in no particular order, we, we work with AWS, Microsoft Azure, and, and Google Cloud. So let's walk through these, and I'll talk through kind of what we're doing with them. Uh, first, we'll start with uh, Slurm on Google Cloud. Uh, if you go to this GitHub repo on the SketMD GitHub site, you'll see the Slurm GCP scripts that we have worked on um, back in February or March timeframe. We released version four. Um, this uh, made ter our Terraform scripts generally available. So it makes it very easy using Terraform to spin up and spin down uh, GCP Slurm clusters. Um, a part of that, we now use the Google Cloud HPC VM image. Um, it makes deployment of your clusters and nodes very, very quickly um, because you're not having to install software. And, and, it, and those images come pre-baked with, with most of the required software that you need. But we do have that ability for you to go in and, and take that image and, and add to it as needed. Uh, this enables placement policies as well, so your, your jobs can run closer together. Uh, the bulk API reduces deployment time um, as you we don't need to make as many calls, uh, API calls to, to Google Cloud. It enables instant templates, so simplifying your configuration. And uh, we created a Google Cloud Marketplace listing, so you're able to actually go to the marketplace and very easily stand up a Slurm cluster with just a couple of clicks and answering a few questions. And with that, you have a Slurm cluster ready to go. Um, so recommend taking a look at that. Um, we have 2108 uh, version of that version four coming out soon. We are kind of waiting until uh, uh, .2 um, is released, and then we'll put a 2108 um, version of, of our version four script so that uh, we will fully support that at that point. Um, a part of this as well is an Intel Select solution that has support built into it with uh, compatibility to Intel solutions like Intel MPI. Right now there is a branch available for that. You can check that out if needed, um, but we'll be putting that, that branch into master when we do the 2108 uh, version four release. Um, then we're currently working on version five. Uh, version five will be released um, in February, March timeframe again. And this is gonna enable a number of billing insights where it'll give you better visibility into how much jobs are costing individual users. Uh, the ability to um, modify your partitions uh, after deployment, post deployment, uh, make it easier to change your partition and what instances you're using. Um, as I just mentioned with the burst buffer, data migration, um, integrating some of that with, uh, with Google Cloud Storage and Slurm, um, SMT, SMT configurability to, to make it easier to manage and um, change the, the hyper-threading nature of, of the nodes, um, as well as using the Cloud Foundations Toolkit. Uh, with this, uh, we're using the standard, as, as much as possible, the standardized best practice Terraform scripts um, with, with GCP to make that easier and simple uh, to support and, and use. Then we've been working with Microsoft Azure. Uh, they have their Cycle Cloud, uh, where they use that with Slurm to uh, easily get a HPC cluster set up with, with Slurm that enables that, that Slurm auto-scaling um, with that. Um, with, with Cycle Cloud, uh, it's a couple of clicks and answer some questions, and you'll, you'll, in a few minutes, you have your, your Slurm cluster uh, ready to go. This enables cost reporting and controls. Um, it enables that hybrid workflows where you have your on-prem bursting out to uh, um, your, your uh, Azure Cycle Cloud resources and has full integration with authorization and, and governance. You can see this link at the bottom can, to go learn more about, about how Azure Cycle Cloud works. A um, couple things to speak specifically to Slurm. They currently support um, 2011 plus. Um, if you have 2108 and you want to start using that, you can talk with Microsoft and they can help you upgrade to that. Um, and, and they're currently at Cycle Cloud 8.2. Um, that has full support for job topology of MPI jobs. Um, you can have GPUs automatically configured with the proper GREST settings. Um, easy to use job accounting as well. Um, and as I mentioned, with the on-prem bursting to, uh, to Azure, you'll see there at the bottom, there's a link to the Cycle Cloud scripts that are, are written um, in their GitHub re uh, repo where they can go and uh, um, help you set up the on-prem configuration to burst to uh, Cycle Cloud. And then uh, they are have a, a new feature coming soon where through the Cycle Cloud UI, you can go and modify 
the Slurm uh, configuration to make that a little easier for you to set up the Slurm configuration in the way that you need through a, through a UI. Then we have um, Amazon Web Services in Slurm. We've been doing a lot of work with them. Um, many of those uh, new features that I talked to talk to you today have been uh, worked with uh, um, through uh, our partnership with Amazon. Uh, two specific features that are in 2108 that I haven't talked about that are, are key for AWS is this improved all or nothing allocation and scaling. Uh, the way this works uh, is, you know, if you are submitting a job that needs a lot of resources, um, but due to maybe stock out issues or quota issues or things like that, where all the resources can't be gathered, um, you may be stuck where half the resources got provisioned. Now, the job can't run because it didn't get all the resources, but you still sp uh, spun up a couple resources for a couple of minutes. Um, and that, that can cost money. So uh, what this allows you to do is make sure that if a job can't get all of its nodes, it won't get any of the nodes. Um, so you don't have that wasted wasted cost. Um, also, uh, we made some modifications to the REST API that enables uh, the ability to use Amazon Cognito. So you can take a look at that. Um, Peril Cluster 3.0 was just launched on September 10th. Um, that is AWS's supported open cl source cluster management tool. That's really the easiest way to get um, a Slurm cluster going on AWS um, and, and get all your, your HPC components that are needed um, on AWS. Um, they, do, they will be having integration with Slurm 2108 coming soon. And then that's where all those features that we had talked about, as well as those two key ones at the top of the slide, um, that uh, those will be implemented. And you can see the link in the upper right hand corner uh, to get more information about that. As I mentioned, their power cluster is uh, kind of their way of getting that parity of the environment that you had on-prem of all those different components that are needed and putting those into a, a Slurm, a Slurm cluster on, um, on, on AWS in an easy to use manner. Um, as of uh, their most recent release, Slurm and AWS Batch are actually their only first party offerings of schedulers that are that are uh, fully supported. So um, it makes it very easy to get that Slurm cluster up and running. At this point, we'll go ahead and take any questions that have come in. So Andy Howard's asking, can you set a separate resume suspend, script, suspend scripts per partition or is that still just global? So that is one thing that did not get added to the per partition um, setup of the is a suspend resume scripts um, that you would still just have a global suspend resume. And then based on what partition is selected, you would um, make th those changes in that sp in your global suspend or resume script. Good question. Okay, that seems like it, it. That's it for today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for for joining us. Um, oh, we got two more questions. Uh, we'll, we'll jump back real quick. Question is: Is the power saving feature restricted to cloud providers? Is there a way to make it working with I? IPMI or any other BMC communication protocol. So let me answer that one first. So uh, yes, uh, basically the main thing is, is there's a resume program and a suspend program and you need to write a script that would work with those those uh, different tools. Uh, so you know we've written scripts for GCP, uh, AWS, and Microsoft Azure have their scripts that do the resume and suspend program. Uh, you would just need to have one written specifically for those those tools. Uh, secondly, do you recommend running a container on the cloud or just having nodes that are in the cloud? Uh, so containers are actually a great way to deal with your applications in the cloud. That's a common question of, you know, where do I, where do I put my application? Do I bake them into the image? Do we install them manually? That, that takes time. Do we put them on some shared file system? Uh, containers are, are probably the best way to do that um, and set up containers as, as part of the job. 
and and you know that that's a good thing to to refer back to Nathan's uh, uh, talk earlier today on what we're doing with containers is as we do more with 2108 um, that will uh, um, be some options that you could take a look at so looks like that's all the questions for today we'll go ahead and wrap things up thank you for everyone for your your time today our next presentation is by Tim Wickberg he's going to discuss Slurm 2108 and beyond um, that's going to start in about five minutes um, and that is on a separate YouTube live stream. So make sure you jump over to that one. Um, and if you have any questions, please reach out to SketMD. Thank you.